Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. Today I'm going to be reading from Jim Flint, the boy from Peoria. And we will be reading about one of Chicago's greatest drag legends, Miss Chili Pepper. Chili Pepper's stories are plentiful, and her persona is legendary. No one who knows or who has met her is indifferent. There are tales of how Chili hooked up Oprah Winfrey with her fashion consultant and how they became pals back when Winfrey used to have a life. <laughs> Chili's biography for the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame reads, Chili was one of the first local media personalities to take up the issue of AIDS awareness, helping to bring HIV AIDS into the homes of middle America at a time when the President of the United States, that asshole Reagan, was not publicly acknowledging the epidemic. Mentions in the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago Tribune, Chicago's Neighborhood Skyline newspaper, and People magazine, plus television appearances on Phil Donahue, Oprah Winfrey, and Jerry Springer's shows, as well as Chicago's WGN-TV all at a time before Rock Hudson's death and its revelations rocked the non-LGBT world, brought Chili into the forefront of the fight to confront AIDS. When Donna Karen wanted to make a statement at the opening of Barney's New York Chicago store, she called on Chili to model as a mannequin in the main display window at the store's launch party which also benefited the Design Industries Foundation fighting AIDS. In 1979, when Michael Butler premiered the movie Hair in Chicago, Chili was the premier entertainment and introduced drag to an audience who may have thought drag applied only to car racing or having a bad day. <laughs> in Pump Girls and Cheeseburgers, a Mimi O'Shea piece in Gay Life on tw June 27, 1985, the writer took Chili to her favorite place, the pump room. She is well known there. A 5x5 five five inch color photo was hung in the bar depicting Chili, Nan Mason, and Pudgy, the article said. Amid familiar greetings, Chili was escorted to booth number two, booth number one always being reserved for Irv <laughs> and ordered a cheeseburger. In the piece, Chili was reported as saying, thanks to Felicia, baton owner Jim Flint, I'm allowed to create my own personality on stage. All of us at the baton do this. Felicia has always been wonderful at allowing each of us that creative freedom, and it works. The article said the performer's name Excuse me. The, art, the performer's name, Chili Pepper, comes from an experience Chili had on a beach in South America with a friend. I was sunning and became very, very red. My companion told me I looked red as a chili pepper. I blushed and took the name, Chili said. She said she created a character somewhat similar to Joan Collins's Alexis Carrington on TV's Dynasty. It took me a long time to create this cartoon. It's a cartoon that works for me. I like clear vocals in my numbers. I like strong individual performances. Mary Wells, Phoebe Snow, Linda Clifford are big favorites of mine. Gradually, I developed this thing for Millie Jackson. Show tunes are not my forte. Production numbers with the entire cast still frighten me. When I first arrived at the Baton, Felicia had an established show with fabulous group numbers. I became less afraid with lots of practice, but still loved to go it alone. O'Shea's piece continued. Chili flashes her rings designed by Steve Feinstein. She then orders a piece of apple pie to go. It arrives wrapped in the shape of a ring, along with a courtesy box of chocolates from management. When asked to give advice to new performers, Chili replied, 
get a job in a factory, get out of town, go home. The market here is saturated. <laughs> well, and that's in the 80s. <laughs> Chili calls Oprah Winfrey a friend, and even more impressive, Winfrey calls her a friend as well. Chili has been on the TV Legends show an astounding seven times. She's been in People and in Playboy. She's been on Joan Rivers, Phil Donahue's, and numerous others' talk shows. She's known in the finest restaurants. The best way to describe bridging the gap between female impersonator and mainstream matron seems to be a good amount of talent and a great deal of chutzpah. <laughs> when I first went and saw Chili, it was at the Blue Dahlia, said Flint. I brought her here, and Jan Howard did not like her. Jan Howard is the Baton's original blonde bombshell. I'll read her another time. So I told Chili I didn't think it would work out. Then I went to the Blue Dahlia a few more times and watched her, and went to Jan and said, Jan, I don't care if you like her or not. She's coming to work here. He <laughs> does. Chili initially came to Chicago to become Miss Gay Chicago. After winning the title in 1974, she stuck around. She was only at the Blue Dahlia a short while before coming to the Baton. She still enjoys it. And you know what? She is still, to this day, at the Baton, performing there three shows a night, Six nights a week since 1974. Yeah. The crowd is the best part of the job, she said. A woman came in a few months ago and said, do you remember me? And of course I said I didn't. But she said she had come in with her mother about a month ago. Of course my next question was, how is she doing? She said her mother had passed a couple weeks ago. The woman added, but I had to come back and say thank you, because he posed for pictures with her and that made her so happy. Those things are the biggest compliments. See, sometimes they give me money, and sometimes they leave me with something else. Those are the best tips. As Chili spoke, it became clearer that what she does is indeed pantomime but far more interpretive, like a hybrid of improv and performance art. I make faces and interact to get a reaction, she said. If I try to be glamorous or flirt or be mean, I'm looking for a reaction. Not everyone understands this. Not everyone has the same sense of humor. I like to be an artist. The people who understand me enjoy it because they see what I am doing. It would be nice if we just have to look good, but there's more to it. There is art, and it is an art where we have to jump up and down in high heels. It is what it is. <laughs> Chicago performer Honey West said, one of the most amazing things I saw was the night Chili Pepper made me really understand and appreciate the art of lip sync. She was doing the Bonnie Ray song, Something to Talk About. And what was so cool is that when you have a set song with set vocals and set places where the vocalist breathes and such, you don't really think of being able to change it. But as I sat there that evening, I watched Chili interpret that song three or four different ways depending on who she was singing it to. She'd perform it one way to sort of chastise people who were talking in one part of the bar, and then she saw a cute guy elsewhere and sang it like, hey, let's give them something to talk about in a flirtatious way. But she did all this with a static recording. It was amazing. She stuck to the song and yet was not limited by it. And I found that completely fascinating in a theatrical way. I mean, as a cabaret singer, I perform songs and change the way I word things or the volume. 
and I can break in between and talk and draw people in in different ways. Chili was having that level of interaction, but with this pre-recorded material. I've heard it a hundred times in my career. People say, you are really talented because you really sing. And I said, no, that's a real talent. There's a real art to lip sync. You just don't realize it. Try it. Go home and pick a song you know like the back of your hand and perform it to the record in a mirror. It's not so easy. Bonnie Raitt is indeed one of Chili's favorites. I am fond of Millie Jackson. She's probably my very favorite. Interesting stuff that tells a story. I love Linda Clifford. Me too. <laughs> and Lo Lolietta Holloway, Chili said, adding, The biggest compliment I ever received was from Millie Jackson. She had me open a concert for her once, and afterwards she said, When I was watching you, I forgot it was my voice. Chili is also the very first Miss Continental ever, the first in 1980. She admits the crowd has changed in the years since it had been at the Bataan. The formerly gay show lounge became more and more of a tourist destination and then finally became a place for bachelorette parties as well. The crowds have changed with AIDS. How could it not have? It was so sad. It was a party and everyone just wanted to have a good time. Then everyone was dying, but they were dying out of love. Now we have a different sort. They come and hopefully enjoy and maybe learn a little about themselves. How to walk in heels, how to put on makeup. And maybe if they have children that are gay, they will learn to be a little more tolerant. Former Baton bartender Warren Williamson said Chili was always the big attraction. I remember watching Chili, and she would not even be able to hold her tips. There were twenty and fifty dollar bills, one after another, and every once in a while, a guy would go to give her a single, and she would throw the dollar bill back at him. She'd have these wads of bills and go and drop it in a box behind the curtain and come back out to collect more. She was something else, and still is. She's still kicking those legs up. Those late-night shows had well-known professionals. Architects, doctors, entertainers, the real upper crust of society. Sean Lewis remembered, We all wanted to be entertainers, but Chili wanted to be a star. When she would start going on like that, Peaches and I would just look at each other and roll our eyes. <laughs> Dina Jacobs volunteered her take. I never quite understood Chili. There was always a sort of shield or cover around her, like she was never quite comfortable with us. I do remember one time, though, we were with Lady Sean, who would eventually become Miss Gay America 1981, at the Fontainebleau Hotel in Miami Beach. And we were watching Miss Gay Florida. There were two camps that night. There was Bobby Lake and her friends, and Cuban Michelle and her friends. The two groups were getting out of control with their cheering. Well, then from behind us come tomatoes thrown at the stage, and the people who really threw them ran. And when everyone turned in shock and anger, there were the three of us. <laughs> we took off running. And one thing I'll say is that Chili was the fastest. She was out the door with her coat and purse across the street before Lady and Sean and I had even gotten out of the building. I love chili pepper, Kelly Lauren laughed. She invented the word regifting and brought schmoozing and networking to an entirely new level. To put it simply, chili is a genius at knowing how to work it. My favorite chili memory was... There used to be this boy queen named Lisa Eaton, who supposedly was a great Judy Garland impersonator back in the day, but when we knew her, she was a drunk. Anyway, 
Chili liked bringing her downstairs and playing pranks on her. She would get Lisa singing Rose's turn, and when Lisa would open her mouth to hit that note of, Here she is, boys! Chili would stick a feather from a boa in her mouth so Lisa would sputter. <laughs> she played that prank a couple of times. Chili is an, individu an individual all her own, Flint said. She has a long reputation. She is accepted out in public at the best restaurants. She promotes herself well. She's not bashful. She's out front doing it. Chili was always a loner. A loner and an icon who doesn't care what people think, but at the same time does, said former Baton manager Lenny Molina. She'd come there to work, and that was about it. It was not to socialize. Chili is truly brilliant and one of the great comedians and stage performers in the genre, said Alexandra Billings. Chili also changed the course of my life. One night, we were doing a show at the Baton. There was a theatrical producer in the audience. He gave Chili a script and said, Here you go. This show is really big in New York, and we want you to star in the Chicago premiere when we open it here. So by this time, I had my own dressing room, which was right across from Chili's. And I saw her in there with a the script and said, What are you reading? She replied that it was a new script a producer had given her, which seemed very good. So I didn't think anything more of it. And then three or four days later, the script was suddenly on my dressing room table. And I said, Chili... Someone put your script in my dressing room. She told me she did. I said, but they gave it to you. They want you. She replied, they want me, but they need you. She did one of her great gestures with the nails and the rings that said, you need it. You need to move on. And that script was for vampire lesbians of Sodom. I auditioned for the part and got it and ran at the Royal George for three years and really resurrected my acting career. Everything snowballed from there, from that extremely generous just generous gesture from Chili. She, in many ways, she changed the course of my life. Speaking of giving the script to Alexandra, then Chante, Chili said, I thought that would... I thought that she could take that journey. She was fantastic. She was an actress. I told them to see her. They wanted me, but I said, no, you have to see her. I insisted. And they did, and that was that. Dana Douglas said, Chili is a trip. Her middle name is Take Me, Give Me, Buy Me. <laughs> I learned from Chili to always ask for something if you want it. If you don't ask, you won't know. So she'll be somewhere and say, I like this. Can I have it? I like that. Will you buy it for me? And she is deathly afraid of planes and elevators. She'll use an elevator, but needs an elevator buddy. She will cling to you the entire time she's riding in it. When I would go with her, she would dig in and let me tell you, you felt it. When I knew her, her fingernails were 14 karat gold. Literally, they were made of gold. Those golden claws held on tight. In fact, the reason I first met Jimmy was because Chili will always get people to drive her places rather than fly. And when Jim saw me in Miss Florida in 1981, it was because he'd driven Chili down there. Chili performing in her heyday could go out on stage and just say, bring me, and make a gesture with those fingers and rings. They would come with hundreds of dollars and diamonds and bracelets. Her birthday parties were legendary and always at some estate. There would be a throne set up, and she would literally be showered with gifts, mostly jewelry. So different mansion, different estate, same throne. The one who gave Chili the best gift would then be her companion for the party. So it would become these great competitions between a lot of very powerful and influential people. 
I think the year I remember most, I bet she was given seventy or eighty thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Her lover for a long time was the jeweler Stephen Feinstein, who died several years ago. And he gave her a huge ring she wears with a diamond C with pepper running down it in emeralds and rubies. When I left town, I gave her a $3,000 oriental rug for her place. She is living her fantasy, and she has to have millions. She's collected jewelry always, and now it's gems, but before it was gold. Before Mr. T gained notoriety and became a bouncer of the year, she brought him into the public eye. He was here in Chicago. We knew him, and he didn't wear the gold then, but Chili did. I think he may well have gotten that the gold chains from Miss Chili Pepper. Chili's birthday parties are a trip at it, says Anne. I remember the one where a bus actually came and brought us to an estate. It was a complete five-star meal and very elegant, and of course, the gifts. I could not believe what I was seeing. Flint laughed when he told one story about a chilly birthday. I went to a birthday party for one of my entertainers back in the 70s. I was playing a joke and rang the doorbell and said, is Mr. Feinstein in, please? They said, he's here. And I said, tell him the Chicago police are here. We've had some complaints and we're on our way up in the elevators. They said, sir, we'll get him. And I said, we'll talk to him when we get there. By the time I got to the door, I heard toilets flushing and this and that. Everyone was throwing their marijuana and everything else down the toilet. When I walked in and said, Chicago police, they never invited me to another birthday party. <laughs> Jewelry is a passion of mine, admitted Chili. It always has been. It's not an investment. It's always a gift. To make something like this, she said, pointing to a huge diamond, pearl, and gold ring, one of the many she was wearing. <laughs> that will move like this, she said, moving the head and the tail of the turtle ring. I think jewelry is eternal, or at least more eternal than we are. If we go tomorrow, this will remain for another hundred, two hundred, three hundred years or more. Look at King Tut's jewelry. That's still around. This is something that will stay. I like things to be long-lasting and consistent like this. I like friendships to be like that. And I, and I love to be like that. Former Baton regular Tasha Long recalled the first coming to Chicago to work at the Baton. Chili's dressing room was right across from mine. I didn't know anybody in the city, and Chili said, what are you doing for Christmas? I said, I don't know. She said, I do. You're coming with me. And she took me with her to a friend of hers for dinner. It was so nice. She had a present for me. And they had presents for me. And really made me feel good. And so not alone at the holidays. I was so grateful for that. My cartoon, as Chili calls her persona, can be a little rough around the edges. Not everyone can be Julie Andrews, and deep down, I am a good and kind person. People don't want everything nice. I have fun. Not everyone understands. Not everyone sees beyond the cartoon. How much of Chili is me and how much is creation depends on who's watching and what they bring out of me. If you're interested in knowing me, you get me. If you only want the cartoon you see on stage, that's what you get. Any description of Chili must come from the audience, from you. Chili is a response. Chili is a mirror. This is my art, and this is what I used to perform. She continued, I'm not naked. That's not what I'm selling. 
this, gesturing to her face. This is what I use. I make an expression and I see how they react. When I see people respond, then I know where to go. That's how you perform. The key is seeing yourself through their eyes. If you judge me because you think I care about this or that, or judge me because of who you hang out with, I don't care. It's taken me years to get acceptance. That is going to be handed down to other people. That is another and maybe a larger way of being kind. So yeah, that is Chili Pepper. Oh, she's just iconic. If, if you ever have the opportunity, I really encourage you to see her in person, watch her perform, and she's mesmerizing. Yeah, so thank you for tuning in this week, and I'll see you next week with more Drag Queen History.